look at that darn wind sock. No soaring with the wind like this, I'm afraid. May improve later, of course. How do you fellows think you're going to learn to fly? Not by very well dreaming about it. Come along. If you could pick up a vigorous young frontier in the morning, there's no earthly reason why you shouldn't fly all the way to Germany in it by the evening. The wing is set now on the fuselage, and a washout of the wing route here gives a smooth airflow over the tail. <laughs> Is it half past yet? Uh, just on. Hey, Walker! Let's hear the weather forecast! An anticyclone has entered over the Bay of Biscuit. The forecast for shipping for the next 12 hours. Western area. Light or moderate westerly winds, visibility moderate. The southern area, light variable winds, the coming westerly, visibility good. These are the ground hoppers, taking their training machine out to practice. They begin by making short hops over level ground. The machine is catapulted by an elastic rope. In this way, beginners learn to handle the controls and to land safely, the most difficult thing in all flying. The modern technique of sail flying has been developed in Great Britain since 1930. Today, there are many big clubs in this country which have up-to-date machines and equipment. you know about the controls. How would you turn a machine to the right? And to the left? And to pick up speed? Again, more gently. And always easy on the controls. She'll fly herself if you'll only let her. Only two aside, sir. Hold on a moment. You haven't done up your safety belt. Never fly without that done up if you want to live long. Walk. Run. Let go. That was all right for a hop though he might have kept his speed steadier. A pilot must learn to judge his airspeed by the rush of wind in the wings or on his face. This girl has already done 20 or 30 ground hops, so they give her a stronger launch. That's how it should be done. These primary machines almost fly themselves. Oh, Pollard. I want Belle to have another go. Now this time, listen carefully to the noise of the wind. And if you think you're going too fast, ease the stick back very gently. Run! Let go. Look out there! Well, as you can see, it's not all plain sailing. But these primary machines are stoutly built, and only a few wires have been broken. While the beginners are doing their ground hops, the more experienced pilots are making longer flights over level ground, using the motor winch. The cable is wound in to take up the slack. Two bags. The machine is launched like a kite. The pilot frees the machine at the top of the climb by means of a quick release worked from the cockpit.
tell you fellows, before we go any further, you ought to learn a bit about sail flying. When you've had more practice, you'll graduate to the hilltop and spend some time flying on a cell, which is just a ground hopper with some of the edges rounded off. You won't be able to get very high in it, but it'll give you your air legs before tackling a secondary, like the cadet. A secondary will polish up your flying, where it's more sensitive to the controls. Can you stay up for long in one? Yes. Remember your hops in the glider, how it sinks downwards as it flies forwards. Even a sailplane, for all its streamlining, must sink too, though more slowly than a glider. No sailplane can ever rise upwards through the air by itself. But if the air blows upwards, then it will keep the sailplane up or blow it higher still, like a ping pong ball in a jet of water. The sailplane is then sail flying. Can the pilot come down when he wants? Yes. He's only got to fly to where the air is not rising, and down he comes in a gliding flight. How can you find an up current? A sail flyer knows that when the wind blows against a range of hills, it is forced upwards all along the slope. By flying over the steep part where the wind is rising fast in a stiff breeze, the sail flyer can keep his height above the ground. If the wind lasts, he can stay up till he gets tired of it. What happens when there's no wind? There are other kinds of upcurrent that don't depend on the wind. The sun warms some parts of the earth quickly, others slowly. Woods and damp places keep cool. Buildings and cornfields get hot. The hot patches on the earth warm the air above them, and hot air rises, as we know. These rising currents of air are called thermals. Often they rise high enough to form cumulus clouds. How do you keep in them? Can you fly to and fro, as in hill soaring? No. These currents are usually columns of rising air, and when you've found one, you must circle to keep in it. You go on circling till you find you're not getting any higher. Then you must look for signs of another thermal and try to reach it before you lose too much height. When you get as skillful as this, you'll count your flying time in hours instead of minutes. Hello, look at that. Things seem to be improving. Conditions have changed for the better. Now for real soaring. Sailplanes and aeroplanes have been known to break up in clouds, and several pilots owe their lives to their parachutes. The pilot straps himself in the machine and closes his greenhouse. He tests the controls before starting. OK. Walk. is going to stay there a bit. Maybe I'll be back in time for tea. Hill height should be about 400 feet today. About 200 already. Now a careful turn over the bow. Might as well get all I can out of pure hill lift before I start hunting thermals. 300 feet on the clock. One more beat and we'll have got all the hill lift can give us. Yes, that should be about our ceiling on hill lift today. Well, we're nicely up above the others now, but no thermals here. Suppose I try a long beat down towards Whitsnade. More sun down that end, better chance of thermals. Good, only three machines ready to go. So there won't be too big a crowd up there yet a while.
come on the neighborhood, spread off the rest. Fried level before the air gets too crowded and spread with comfort. If only those roofs up in the larger, we might expect a thermal of course. So, ten fifth, sort of the devil. One little second, two little seconds, three little seconds, four little seconds, five little seconds, and round we go. Height six hundred. Uh, speed 33. Height 700. Easy there. Don't let those bumps spoil your circling. Thermal center must be further south. Now where have we got to? Hello, there's a cloud in the house. What prospect? Height 800. And rising plenty. Now let's see. Cloud must be about a mile away. May come a bit nearer, but not much. Hmm. We shall need at least another 400 before we can take this back across country. Go on with the dance, Ladybird. May our thermal last. Height 1100. Ah, oh, but only rising two pits now. That cloud will be less than a mile from here. We must count it, Lady Bird. Do you know how many hours have been flown today? No, Mac isn't down yet. So a dream of the past comes true, and the sailplane pilot of today, sweeping in silent flight across the sky, is one in spirit with the pioneers, the poets, and the mystics of the past.